back to another video today we're going to be doing my top five spring nymphs I did a little poll on youtube a few weeks back and asked what you guys would want to see and this one got the overwhelming majority of the votes so that's what we're going to be doing today i'm going to show you guys the specific patterns that are my favorite but i'll also throw in some variations of patterns that i like to use that are sort of similar to the patterns that i'm going to show you the variations work you know, almost just as good. And I found myself using those a lot as well. And again, this is not an end all be all sort of list. I mean, you guys can use whatever you want in the spring, whatever works best for you, use that. But figured I would just show you guys, you know, what nymphs I like to use in the spring and what works best for me. So to start things off here, we're gonna start the list with the good old stonefly. And this is the stone pheasant pattern, which you guys have been seeing a lot of lately here fishing in the winter. Um, but I like to use this pattern a lot from about late winter all the way through spring and having a stone fly on your rig can help get down. And especially in the spring when the, the flows are, they're high and they're a little off color. Sometimes they're off color a lot, but having a big presentation that they can see in that dirty water helps and just having something with that you can throw a lot of weight on. So I use like size 3.8 millimeter tungsten beads and 4.6 for very like uh, deep pockets. And uh, you know, these have no problem getting down to the bottom. I like using them as a point fly a lot of times in the spring, just, just so I can get the nymph that I think that they're gonna be on. So say like a size 16 or 18. And if the, if the flows are very high, I'll just throw this on the point fly just to get the other fly down there as well. I mainly tie this fly in size 10 and I like to tie a few different variations which are an all black for like little black stone flies. I like to tie a golden stone fly version and an olive version as well but I mean this this reddish brown version is the one that I find myself using the most and has been the most productive for me. Second on the list is going to be a generic pheasant tail. So this is just the, the normal color scheme with the uh, copper bead on there and this this fly right here is my top producing fly of all time just this simple little pheasant tail jig I mean when you're fishing in the in the spring and you flip some rocks a lot of the nymphs that you're gonna see they're, they're just gonna be very dark colored and uh, sort of brown blackish and that's what a pheasant tail does it, it just imitates those nymphs that are abundant in the stream a, a lot of nymphs are going to look like a pheasant tail there are a lot of flashier patterns out there and stuff like that I find myself to be more of like a, a natural colored fly person and then in spring one of the the main hatches is sulfurs and a pheasant tail nymph does a great job at imitating a sulfur now i do actually tie a few other variations of my pheasant tails which are all black and i tie like a rusty yellow version that sort of imitates uh, sulfur nymph because if you flip rocks and you look at sulfur nymphs they do have like that yellowish tint to them all my pheasant tails i tie those in size 14 16 and 18 but i do find myself using the 16s the most I would say 18 is the second most, and then 14s, I only use those in uh, specific situations where I need something heavier to get me down to the bottom when maybe I'm not using a stonefly as well. The third fly on our list is gonna be an olive paradigon, and this specific pattern right here is my second top producing fly of all time. It's just a super simple pattern. It's just a thread body with some fingernail polish for the wing case and some cocktailion fibers for the tail. And then I like it with a silver bead, but I do tie some other patterns that are similar to it. So last year I was using my, my, that fly specifically actually got outproduced last year by one with an orange collar. And then I also tie one with a little flash butt to it. But I mean, they all produce, but I just find myself going for the one without the hotspot, the one without the flash butt the most. But th this fly is great because it just imitates a lot of those olive nymphs that are on the bottom of the stream. And I think that this fly is really good because not only does it imitate nymphs, I think it also imitates little caddis larvas. And even in the summertime, I've used this fly and had good success because maybe the fish think that it's some sort of inchworm or something like that. Because it's so simple, it can imitate anything basically. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have like a specific look to it. So because it's so simple, it can imitate a lot of stuff that's coming downstream. Uh, but I, I like to tie that pattern specifically 
in sizes 16 and 18. I do have some 18 or 14s of it, but I find myself using the 18 of that pattern the most. Fourth on our list here is a green blowtorch. So the reason that I like to use this fly a lot in the spring is because in spring there's just a ton of caddis out. And I think that this fly does a good imitation of caddis. I mean, one, it could be a peeping caddis. Two, it could be some sort of hatching caddis with the uh, hackle on there, it sort of makes it look like it's hatching. And then also it's just kind of like an attractor. I mean, it's, it's flashy, it's got some hot spots on it, and it just does a great job of imitating caddis. You guys saw a lot of this this past fall. Um, I was using this a lot in the fall and having great success with it. I also tie an orange version of this. I don't find myself using the orange as much as I do the green, but I mean, they're both great patterns. I find myself using the green more though. I tie my blow torches in size 14 and 16. I find that 18 is just a little too small because there's a lot going on in this fly. It's, it's hard to pack it all into like a smaller size 18 fly. And for the most part, caddis, uh, you know, when you're tying caddis flies, you really don't go below 16 for caddis anyway. A lot of the caddis you're gonna find on the stream bottom are not gonna be that small. And to wrap things up, our last fly on the list is the olive quill. So this is actually a little different from the one that we tied back in the fall. Uh, the only difference being the bead color and the collar color. The collar color that we put on the fly in the video uh, from the fall was like a UV gray with a black nickel tungsten bead. But this, this pattern here is the original that I started using and found great success with. I remember having some killer days on Penn's Creek with this fly. But I mean, this, this right here is gonna be your blue winged olive imitation for the spring. And in the spring, you're gonna find tons of blue winged olives in, this, in the creek. And I just think that this fly does a really good job at imitating sort of like those small blue winged olive nymphs and I mean really just imitates any small nymph. I like quill bodied flies, they just look really good I think and I, I fish this fly with a lot of confidence and I just feel like when, when a fish sees this they can't resist but again blue winged olive nymphs are sort of on the smaller side so I find that size 18 works the best for me. I actually don't tie that fly in any other size other than 18, just because I just think it's it's really good fly in size 18. But that's gonna be it for this one. Those are my top five flies for spring fishing. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know um, I did, like I said at the beginning, I did the poll, a lot of people wanted to see this video. So I figured, you know, spring's upon us and I'm getting hyped. I'm sure you guys are getting hyped. I'm sure everybody has been tying a bunch of flies, getting ready for the spring season. So figured what better time than uh, now to put this out because we're just about getting into the, the you know, the start of spring, usually around mid-March, things start to get going, basically. The fish start to move around, spread out some, and get, get feeding, and those nymphs get active. So that's gonna be it for this one. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a comment below. Let me know any suggestions for future videos or any like top five videos like we did for this one that you would wanna see. And uh, don't forget to leave a like on the video. It keeps my morale up, lets me know that you guys like these videos. And until next time, peace.